Please be seated. Thank you so very much for making it to Mass this evening. Merry Christmas to all of you. I remember always with great fondness going to Christmas Eve Mass in my own parish church in Poland. And, you know, now uh, you are all outside and you're being warmed up by the heaters and it's about 60 degrees right now. I just checked the weather and you may feel like complaining. Well, can you imagine when we had to go to Christmas Eve Mass, it was extremely cold in a stone cold church. There were no heaters, no heaters. The only thing to warm you up was some homemade Polish vodka before you went to Mass. And so they even gave it to us kids. Open up. But of course, we don't need any Polish homemade vodka here. We have the Holy Spirit to warm us up for our own celebrations. And I want to wish all of you, first and foremost, a beautiful Christmas celebration during these days. It's just beginning. We have only begun. Christmas is such a wonderful time for us people of faith. It is to the shepherds, you know, that the Christmas message is first made known. The shepherds were societal rejects during that time. Nobody wanted to be associated with shepherds. They were drunkards. So much so that they were considered to be thieves and liars. The courts during that time would not allow shepherds to testify because they were the do-nothings. And it is to these marginalized people, the ones who taught themselves to be worthless, that the message, the Christmas message is first announced. It is when you feel forgotten, when you feel like nobody pays attention to you. It is when you are most down that God comes to you. It is to the least. The ones that feel like they have nobody. The depressed that God comes and says, you are somebody. You are everything. For you this day, not just for your neighbor or somebody else. It is for you that the message of Christmas comes today. It is for you that the baby was born to fill you with that warmth today in the midst of everything that you go through in your life. Mary is at the center of our celebrations today. Mary. And Mary, you know, the name Mary means struggle. The word Mary, her name, means to struggle. She had a life of struggle. She was a 12-year-old girl. Can you imagine this? 12 years old, being told that you will become the mother of God. And yet, as tough as her life was, Mary did not close herself within herself. She didn't become a closed up person. Even though she carries this great mystery within herself, Mary is a model for us of openness. Now remember, Mary has to flee because Herod is after her baby. She is pregnant by the power of the Holy Spirit. She's engaged to be married. She has a life of so much struggle. And yet she doesn't become a bitter, closed off, closed up person. Mary is a model for us of openness. Not only does Mary open up, but she goes to her cousin Elizabeth to comfort her, to give her a word of comfort. And during those times, women we're not allowed to travel alone, you know, to this very day. If you look at Middle Eastern society, for example, in Saudi Arabia or in any Muslim country, you know that women are not allowed to go anywhere by themselves. 
And yet, Mary goes, and the Bible says she doesn't just go, she goes in haste to visit her cousin Elizabeth to comfort her, to give her a word. Mary goes through the hill country, the Bible says. Can you imagine? Surrounded by wild animals in desert territory, and she's pregnant when she goes. Let me remind you, there was no Uber back then. Lyft didn't exist. Did you know that? I know that's so hard for our modern uh, selves to comprehend. But there was no Uber. And yet she goes to her cousin because she is open to other people. She struggles. She has a tough life. But she's open. We too are to be like Mary. We struggle in this life. This pandemic has been a struggle for so many of us, hasn't it? Like right now, you know, do you think this is easy to have mass like this? You know, have to put up with so much. I mean, it, it, you know, and other things I won't get into things. You have had it tough in your own life during this time, haven't you? You don't have an easy life, do you? You know, the church says Mary is the model of our life as Christians. She is the model of discipleship. So if, she, if her name is Struggle, what makes you think your life will be different? But even though she struggles, she doesn't close up. She's open. And it is people who so often provide the struggles in our life, isn't it? Think about who it is that has caused you the most struggle in your life. Every single day, I wake up and I thank God for all of the sheep that God sends me. And then, you know, I also thank Him for the goats as well, you know. Because it's the people in our life who so often cause us this struggle in our life. I'm, uh, Mary's name is Struggle. Who provided the struggle in her life? Jesus. He was a source of her problems. Think about it. Aren't your children, your spouse, your family the source of your aches? Hello? I'm speaking. <laughs> Isn't it? You know, but you wouldn't have it any other way. What would you be without your kids or your husband or your wife, your family? What would your life be like? What would my life be like without all of you? It would be so boring. You know? We all need people in our life. And that e we need family. Jesus was born in a family. He spent 30 years living in his house in Nazareth. Did you know that? Only three years working outside of his house. So for every year that he spent working as a public person, he spent 10 years growing in holiness and sanctifying himself inside of his family life in in the house in nazareth that's why your private life your family life is 10 times more important than any public life you have your children are worth the struggle your husband is worth it they are worth it because it is through them through the people in your life that you enter into the mystery of community, the mystery of family. People so often ask me, Father Adam, what is the definition of heaven and hell? You want to know what the definition of heaven and hell is? Would you like to know? Even if you don't, I'll still tell you. The definition of hell is loneliness. Hell is loneliness isolation this pandemic this virus has brought a lot of hell 
Through what? Through isolation and loneliness. What is the definition of heaven? Community. That's why it's so wonderful we're gathered here right now. Family. Having somebody in your life. That's heaven. Heaven is God, you know. And God is Trinity. God is a relationship. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let's sign ourselves. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. That's heaven. Christmas is all about God being born in our lives. What is Christmas about? God coming down to take you to heaven? Is that what Christmas is about? No! Christmas is not about coming down to take you to heaven. Christmas is about God coming down to bring you heaven. To bring heaven to you. God wants heaven for you. Not just when you die, but right now. And you experience that when you accept God in your life. And God is flesh. God is a human being incarnate. So we have to accept people in our life. All the people. Yeah. The sheep and the goats. Mm -hmm. That's how it is. For the baby to be born in our life, in our heart. How do we tell if we have the baby born in us? How do we tell if we have Christmas, if we are truly celebrating Christmas? How do you tell that? How do you know if you're really having a Merry Christmas? Well, we look at Mary. As soon as she becomes pregnant with Jesus, she goes off to visit her cousin Elizabeth. She goes out, out of herself, struggling. She wants to be with others. With her cousin, she does with which all of you, I know you're having a Merry Christmas. Do you know how I know that? Because you're here. And it's a struggle, but you're here. That's how. Because you want to be with others. You don't want to be alone. When God is born within you, you become open to others. You want to be with people. You want community. You want relationship. You want God, and God is relationship. That's the mark of whether Christmas has happened in your life, whether you desire community. If you want isolation, if you want to be by yourself, then you don't have Christmas. If you're all closed up within yourself, if you're all secretive, if it's all about me, myself, and I, then you don't have Christmas in you. That means you don't want Jesus. Because Jesus is love. And love, the best definition of love that I have ever discovered, the best definition of love is that love is openness. Heaven was opened today and God came down. God opened heaven and came down. The best definition of love is openness. To love is to be open. So my message for Christmas to all of you today is be like Mary. What'd she do? She opened up. So open up. We think that love is working to give your kids everything and telling them you love them. But you know, words aren't worth the breath it takes to say them unless they are accompanied by the actions. You got to act on your words. You have to feel that the other person loves you. Do your family members feel that you love them? It's easy to say it. I could be here, you know, all, all you want and to tell you, oh, I love you all so very much. But if my actions didn't accompany my words to allow you to feel that I love you, what well, would that, you know, it'd be empty, wouldn't it? They'd be all empty. 
So I make tamales. And not just any tamales, but holy tamales. Because they have holy water in them. <laughs> and blessed salt. <laughs> See? It's the actions, and you all be able to purchase tamales. See how wonderful? <laughs> Speaking of holy water, do you all know how to make holy water? You don't know how to make holy water? No? Oh my goodness, come on now. You don't know how to make holy water? You boil the hell out of it. You didn't know that? It's good to have smiles on our faces. It's Christmas. I hope you're all uh, having a, a good day and put a smile on our face. God loves us so much. We have to be open. If there's something you learn from me, it's to always be an open person. And I learned that from Mary. Mary's my absolute model for me. I just love Mary. How many people are running away in their families from opening up, from sharing their feelings and their hurts and longs and desires? Open up. That's my message to you this Christmas. You know, last year in May, I went to the Holy Land. And I saw where Jesus was born. He was born in a manger. But you know what a manger is? It's where the animals eat. It's the feeding trough for animals. But the manger was inside of a cave. Have you ever seen a cave in pictures of a cave? It doesn't have doors. Did you know that? There are no doors in the place that Jesus was born. It's a grotto. Jesus was born with a place that has no doors, totally open. Because he wants us to be likewise, totally open. Are your doors open? I'm asking, answer for yourself. You know, I want to end with this story. It's a visual for all of you. When I was in the seminary, and I was in a Polish seminary, we had a ritual on the day of someone's birthday where every morning before they would get up, we'd be right there at their door. And we got up very early. We got up like at 5 in the morning, okay? So we were, we were there very early when everybody's, whoever's birthday it was, okay? And it didn't happen too often because there was only like 30 of us in the seminary, okay? And we would go to the person's room who was celebrating their birthday and you know what we did to them? Do you know what we did? Picture this. Guess what we did? You will never guess. We removed their door. We took the door off of their hinges of their room and we hid it in the attic. Can you picture this? We took their door off of their room. They would have no door for the entire duration of their birthday. Only until they were ready to go to sleep would we put the door back in. You get it? Everyone could go to their room and look in all day long. Mm -hmm. Christ is openness. He calls us to openness in our life. Shame is from the devil. Look at Adam and Eve in the garden. They became ashamed, right? And they hid themselves, isolated themselves. And what does God say to them? Come out, doesn't he? That's what God is telling you today. Come out. Take that door off. It's a birthday today. 
Jesus says this poignantly when he says in John 15, 15, I call you my friends because I have told you everything. I no longer call you slaves because a master doesn't confide in his slaves. No, you are not slaves. You are my friends. So I've told you everything. If God is open, you got to be open as well. Merry Christmas. <laughs>